Good morning and welcome to Modern Masters Women um, events programme. This is a really special Saturday that we have. And here is Alice Strang, our award-winning art historian, curator of modern and contemporary art, who's going to give us a 10-minute presentation. So I'm just going to hand over to Alice. Alice, welcome and see you shortly. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you uh, for joining me this morning. Um, I'd like to thank Christina and, and the team at the Scottish Gallery for inviting me to give this talk. Um, I'd like to look at how um, 20th century Scottish women artists made the journey from student to professional. And I think this can be divided into four stages. Uh, training, practicing, exhibiting, and receiving recognition. And I'm going to do this by looking at the experiences um, four of the artists in the Modern Masters Women exhibition, um, namely Pat Duthwaite, Joan Adley, Wilhelmina Barnes Graham and Anne Redpath. And you'll see that we've got some photos of the artists and a few examples of their work, and they're just going to roll on a loop while I talk. So I'm going to start off with training. Barnes, Graham and Redpath attended Edinburgh College of Art, with Redpath concurrently studying at Murray House College of Education. Erdley trained at Glasgow School of Art and spent a summer at Hospital Field College of Art in Arbroath. In contrast, Pat Duthwaite uh, came to the visual arts via dance. Uh, she was essentially a self-taught lifelong learner. She was born in Glasgow in 1934, and she started dance classes with the pioneer Margaret Morris uh, in 1947. Uh, Morris's pupils also received art lessons from her partner, uh, the Scottish colourist J.D. Ferguson. And Morris and Ferguson were at the uh, heart of Glasgow's art world, centred on the New Scottish Group and the Celtic Ballet. And Morris had established the Celtic Ballet in 1940, and Duthwaite was part of the company between 1951 and 1954. On the conclusion of her contract, Duthwaite decided to become an artist, and Ferguson encouraged her in this endeavour, but dissuaded her from formal training. He declared, go to art school. If you go to art school, you'll never be an artist. You are an artist. Duthwaite left Scotland four years later and spent time in Essex, Suffolk and London, Soho. The influence of artist friends, including the two Roberts, Cahoon and McBride, and William Crozier, informed her developing practice. A Jean de Buffet exhibition seen in Paris in 1960 captivated Duthwaite, and his influence can be seen in work made whilst living between Cambridge and Mallorca uh, during the 1960s. Wide-ranging travels from India to Libya and Peru, rather than an art school's curriculum, shaped Duthwaite's progression. She developed a distinct and simplified flattened style based on graphic foundation, in which she had no patience for conventional notions of the beautiful subject matter or technique. And indeed, as Ferguson had predicted, it was the very lack of formal training which proved to be the making of her as an artist. Duthwaite died in Dundee in 2002. So I'll move on to practicing as an artist. Following her studies, Barnes Graham, who we can see in the current photo, moved to Cornwall, where she became a member of what is now known as the St Ives School. After graduating, Redpath married, lived in France, and raised a family. She eventually settled in Edinburgh, where she established a successful career and exhibited regularly and widely. Duthwaite pursued her independent path. Meanwhile, Erdley developed a dual practice based in Glasgow and Catiline, a fishing village on the northeast coast of Scotland. When working in Glasgow, Erdley was often drawn to the street children of deprived parts of the city. She would sketch and photograph them at play, admiring their inventiveness and observing their social interactions. Some were happy to sit for her in her studio, where she also worked up her sketches and photographs into fully realized paintings, which sometimes incorporated text and collage elements. A rawness of technique avoided sentimentality, 
whilst capturing the untamed energy and unselfconsciousness of her subjects. From 1954, Erdley spent significant amounts of time in Catiline, where she painted on plein air, in all seasons, times of day and night, uh, sorry, times of day and night and weather conditions, trying to convey the sheer power and experience of her natural surroundings, Erdley often created large-scale works in which the borderline between representation and abstraction is overridden by sensation. Sometimes organic matter, including nearby grasses and seeds, was applied to the wet paint surface to add an element of pure realism. At others, sweeping powerful brushstrokes speak of the power of the sea, wind and sun, felt and expressed in as direct a manner as possible. Such was her determination, Erdley was able to create a substantial body of work before her premature death in 1963, aged 42. Now I'm going to move on to exhibiting. Erdley, Redpath and Barnes Graham all took, all took advantage of the opportunities available to show their work in group exhibitions organised by institutions such as the Royal Scottish Academy and the Royal Glasgow Institute, as well as by exhibiting societies including the Society of Scottish Artists and the Society of Scottish Women Artists. Needless to say, Douthwaite was less involved with such orthodox platforms, but all four received lifetime solo exhibitions staged by the Scottish Gallery. Barnes Graham's exhibiting career began whilst a student, when one of her works was included in the Scottish Society of Scottish Artists exhibition of 1935. She was a keen joiner and loyal member of groups including the Newland Society of Artists and the Penwith Society of Arts. Her first solo exhibition was held in G. R. Downing's bookshop in, in St. Ives in 1947, when she was 35 years old. Other first solo shows followed in London at the Redfern Gallery in 1952 and in Scotland at the Scottish Gallery in 1954. Her reputation spread as her work was included in group exhibitions abroad from America to Australia. In them she was defined variously as British, from St Ives, abstract, promising, English and Scottish. In 1960 Barnes Graham inherited a house outside St Andrews and thereafter she straddled both the English and the Scottish art worlds. However, she described herself as a lone wolf during the middle period of her life. Her work was seen in public less often, not least due to the waning in popularity of the St Ives School at that period of time. Barnes Graham's career, however, ended with a flourish of innovation, accompanied by a flurry of major exhibitions, including at Tate St Ives in 2000, and a touring show which travelled from Aberdeen to Truro throughout 2002. On her death two years later, Barnes Graham's reputation as a pioneer of British abstraction was firmly established. And so finally on to achieving professional recognition. Barnes Graham, Erdley, Duthwaite and Redpath all received professional recognition of varying types and degrees during their lifetimes. Barnes Graham was made a commander of the British Empire, Erdley was elected a member of the Royal Scottish Academy, and Douthwaite was championed by Douglas Hall, the founding keeper of the Scottish National Gallery of Modern Art in Edinburgh. Following her resumption of painting in earnest in the early 1940s, Redpath's ability was soon acknowledged when her work was selected for the Royal Academy of Art Summer Exhibition of 1946. The following year, she had her first solo exhibition in Scotland. The acquisition of work for a public collection is a major landmark in an artist's career, and this occurred for Redpath in 1948, when the recently painted Pinks was purchased by Glasgow Art Gallery and Museum. In 1952, Redpath became the second woman ever to be elected a full academician of the Royal Scottish Academy and the first female painter to be awarded that honour. In 1960, she became the first Scottish woman to be elected an associate member of the Royal Academy of Arts in London. Beyond these official honours, 
Redpath's highly regarded position amongst her peers is symbolized in Robin Philipson's ensemble painting, Gathering at Seven London Street of about 1954, which is on loan to the Scottish National Portrait Gallery. It depicts Redpath three times as a celebrated salon hostess, surrounded in her home by fellow artists, including William Gillis, William Wilson, and Philipson himself. On her death in 1965, a memorial exhibition was held at the Royal Scottish Academy, which toured across Scotland, cementing the recognition of Red Pass status as one of the country's most important 20th century artists. And so to conclude, Wilhelmina Barnes Graham, Pat Douthwaite, Joan Eardley, and Anne Redpath all found their own paths from student to professional, from training to practicing, exhibiting and receiving recognition for their achievements. They each made a vital contribution to the history of Scottish women artists, which is being celebrated and continued in the Scottish Gallery's current Modern Masters Women exhibition. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. That was great. We had a, we had one or two wee issues in the background, but we I know that Lisa sorted sorted those out for us. When you um, when you put modern Scottish women together in twenty fifteen, I mean, I mean it was such a I mean it's such a, a a big task. You know how how do you go about selecting it? Is is it based on work that that was available? And um, what did you really want to achieve? What was really surprising? Um, from from that, I mean, we 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 loved that exhibition, and we we learned we learned so much about ourselves uh, from from that exhibition, and and many people who came into the Scottish Gallery. It's it's such a small place, Edinburgh. So if you go to one exhibition, you come you come to another place, and you and you discuss it. It was a, it, and we're still discussing it five years later. Um, so t tell us a bit more about your rationale, how that came about, and what you what you what you learned from that. Well, I think we felt that there, there was a, a really important story to be told um, and to, to focus on the achievements of, of Scottish women artists. Uh, we covered the period from 1885 to 1965, and that was very deliberate because um, Sir William Fettus Douglas, who was president of the Royal Scottish Academy in 1885, described uh, women artists' work as the same as uh, men, male artists' work only um, only weaker and poorer, um, but it was also the year in which Fran Newbury was appointed director at Glasgow School of Art and really transformed that into a leading art, art institution in terms of female students and staff. And then we carried on through to 1965, which was the date of uh, Redpath's death, when we felt that a, a new generation and a, and a new art world was emerging. Um, the first place that, that is obvious to look is in public collections and the wonderful website Art UK is a, is a great starting place for all of us to discover new work. Um, and then just to, to, to delve a little deeper into public gallery stores, perhaps works that haven't been displayed for some time. Um, and also to talk to people like the Scottish Gallery, private galleries and their private um, uh, uh, clients with works that are hanging on their drawing room walls but haven't been seen in public for years and so that was that was where we started. I, yeah I mean we're, we're always learning about our own history um, we think we know what, whatever we think we know we don't we don't know and so um, for our exhibition you know we, do, we did put in a couple of women artists that have been completely forgotten and we we had found them and you know the, the secondary market is, is really interesting we don't always have a record of everything that we've done which is why it's so important to to keep looking because whatever we think we know we'll discover something we'll discover something new so our, our exhibition has that balance of women who were forgotten lots of men get forgotten as well um, established artists and, and kind of what happens to the whole field. I mean, the, the arts and crafts movement, it seems particularly important as being a, a, a period of time where, where things really change for women becoming professional artists, wouldn't you? That's, that seems to have been a, a very strong aspect, even though women have been artists. Well, I've always been artists, wouldn't you say? 
Yeah, and, and I mean, one of the interesting things was that, for example, it was frowned upon for women to, to sculpt because that was considered um, physical. They might get dirty, they might get sweaty. Um, and therefore some female sculptors actually exhibited anonymously or just with their initials. So it wasn't obvious that they were a, a woman. Um, and there seemed to be this Victorian idea of feminine accomplishments that you would be a, a pretty embroiderer or, or be able to make lovely flower watercolors. Um, so it was great to celebrate people like uh, Gertrude Alice Meredith Williams, who worked with Lorimer on Paisley's War Monument, for example, War Memorial, for example, who was making huge life, life, life size uh, equestrian statues in her independent studio in Edinburgh. And so I've got a question for you from, from Juliet, um, who says, Dear Alice, is there a new generation of Scottish female artists who are currently students and coming through who you are keeping your eye on to see if they make the transformation to professional? I mean, I think that's a really good point, which is we're not stuck in the past. It's just we're establishing how, how the history has happened. And um, so it's, it's actually a really good to have a contemporary question thrown, thrown out there. And actually the timing is almost perfect because I have written about a female student who has just graduated from Edinburgh College of Art. Um, you might like to have a look at their digital graduate showcase on their website. And the piece that I've written is going to go live tomorrow. So if you um, look at the Edinburgh College of Art or my Twitter feed tomorrow, you'll see who I have set my sights on from that point of view. Excellent. Well, I'm not going to take up any more of your time. I know that there's there's so much uh, that we could talk about. We could talk about this for a couple of hours. You know, you know so much. Um, we've got lots of people thanking thanking you for coming on here this morning, and we look forward to your Twitter feed uh, tomorrow and see who we should be looking at. So, Alice, thank you so much for coming here this morning as part of our Modern Masters Women celebration. My pleasure. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Thank you. Thanks, Alice. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.